Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about external drives. I want to talk about people that utilize network attached storage devices and as means of a multi-tiered backup solution take advantage of USB backups. Pretty much all the NAS brands support it. All of the NASs out there from Synology to QNAP to Acer Store to TerraMaster to Netgear to you name the lot they've all pretty much got USB 2 or USB 3 ports on them. The reason they have this alongside compatibility of certain peripheral devices like webcam sometimes and UPSs is because a number of you like to have a USB backup of your NAS or vice versa. That is to say that on a routine scheduled pattern or ad hoc, you can back up the contents of your NAS to a connected USB drive and then take that drive and take it with you away. Alternatively, maybe you take an external drive for work. Maybe you're a photographer, a student, or just someone that carries a hard drive around with you at all times. Weird. But maybe you do carry an external drive with you and you add data to it on a regular basis. With this system of USB backups, which has become even more impressive over recent years, you're able to connect that drive to a NAS and often with a one-touch copy button on the front or a regimented automated system using the software of the NAS, you can back up the contents of that USB onto the NAS and every time you do it, it either creates a fresh version or it only backs up the files that have changed. There's lots of options open to you. So you already know why USB drives on, uh, USB backups on NAS do have a place, even with network attached storage growing the way it is. But one thing a number of you probably didn't know is the way USB drives have changed significantly. Now, here is the Seagate Backup Slim. It was a 2TB drive. I picked it up for about 80 quid, I think, and maybe 85. And this is a 2TB, that's 2 terabyte bus powered drive. That means there's no external power needed. It is powered by the device it is connected to. It's a USB drive and it's a mechanical hard drive inside there. Now, most NASs, when you are performing the backup, do run kind of at their own pace. Their own CPU makes all the difference. And on top of that, the port you use makes all the difference. Which is why in 2020, it's impressive that we're seeing more and more USB-C, and that is USB 3.1 Gen 2 powered drives. We're seeing this port arriving on more NAS devices, with QNAP pretty much largely getting in there before anyone else uh, with their own USB 3.1 Gen 2 C and A ports, all providing 10 gigabit connectivity to an external drive, with USB arriving, standard USB 3, that is, with 5 gigabytes of connectivity, uh, gigabit, I should say. Um, now, on top of that, we are seeing SSDs coming down in price quite dramatically. Because of the rise of things like NVMe and um, basically PCIe powered SSDs. Traditional SATA SSDs, although more expensive, are becoming more affordable. And what I want to talk about today is using a QNAP NAS, show you the performance difference of utilizing a standard USB drive that's five gigabits per second, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 or USB 3.2 Gen 1. The naming convention's gone nuts basically, but standard USB 3 versus an external USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 drive. Now, before we get any further, let's highlight straight away, this is gonna win in terms of performance. It's an SSD and it's using a faster connection. The trick we're seeing today is how much faster it can be. Not, is it faster? We already know that before I've unboxed them. What we wanna work out today is how much faster it is utilizing this technology. Because is this a case of QNAP adding these ports, but the infrastructure not being able to take advantage of these connections, or is the inclusion of USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports on a NAS something we can actually get behind in 2020? So let's make our way to the screen of the user interface of the QNAP, and we're gonna connect to these drives one by one to see the performance difference between them within the NAS. Let's go. Right, so here we are on the desktop of the PC and we've set up the QNAP NAS. In the meantime, I've chucked on around about 100 gig of data onto the device to play with. It's just a bunch of stuff from my archive. And if we right click, we can see that the total, ball, total storage there is 95.2 gigabytes. So that is how much data we're dealing with today. Now, I'm going to connect both of these external drives 
approved shortly. And once I've connected them, they should appear both in File Station and in the Storage and Snapshots Manager. So I'm just going to move over to the other side of the room and I'm going to connect these drives. So there you go, we've connected both of those drives. It's going to take a second for them both to register. We'll just close those down, give it a chance to refresh. And with both of those drives, I can just hear the um, hard drive spinning up there. And there you go, they've both appeared at the same time there. So once again, we have the SanDisk as a SSD that's been connected into the USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second connection and the mechanical hard drive connected to a standard USB 3 5 gigabits uh, per second, uh, five, sorry, five megabytes per second. Um, so between these two, we're going to find out five gigabytes per second, more like a stupid thing to say. So right now, the plan is to make our way into the file station manager. And what we want to do is run a complete copy of this data onto both of those disks. We're not going to do them at the same time because that will make this test rather unfair. But what I'm going to do is copy this data onto the hard drive and then copy it onto the SSD. Then for you guys on screen, I'm going to show both of these processes running side by side to show you the time difference between them. So without further ado, I'm going to start the first copy and then this will screen record for me, but hopefully on screen, you're going to see both of these two operations happening simultaneously side by side to give you some idea about the performance differences between them as a NAS backup. I'll go into the backup there and paste. And we'll leave that to start there. Right, so now both procedures have been completed. We can take a good look now at the different performance between them. And I've run a few numbers. So straight off the bat, we can go straight here and we can see that the USB to hard drive um, conversion took 1,143 seconds or 19 minutes if you want to be really old fashioned. That's a result of 4.99 gigabytes per minute with the SSD outclassing it as we expected at just around half of that, around 10.67 gigabytes per minute. Now, obviously we knew the SSD would outperform the hard drive. We also kind of knew that the USB uh, connect, uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 would outperform USB 3. But it's worth also highlighting that the NAS we were using today was a RAID 1 environment. And a lot of the time, the, the bottleneck when it comes to larger scale USB devices will be about the drives that you use. So for example, we're using two hard drives in this RAID 1 environment, a RAID environment which is still synchronizing, I might add. The result was that it can always make an impact. But just based on the results we saw using those as logic, we can work out quite some startling numbers. So by these guidelines that we've created up here, we can see that instead of 95 gigabyte, if we used 500 gigabyte, we would be utilizing, um, it would take over a hundred minutes to copy that data over to the USB drive. If there was 500 gig of those types of files with only 46 minutes taken on the SSD. And as our capacities grow larger, we can see that that double time really makes all the difference. When we go all the way up to 10 TB, where it takes 1.39 days to copy on the standard USB hard drive. Now, the reason I'm telling you all of this 
is because first and foremost, you if you're going to use a USB backup in your own environment, you're going to be doing lots of them. And whether you use differential backups or full copies in different directories each time so you can keep a time managed backup, having an external drive that's gonna be able to utilize these additional speeds is going to be hugely beneficial. Add to that the fact that right now we were using just two bays in a NAS. If you were gonna take advantage of larger four and eight bay NASs as well as rack mounts too, and take advantage of USB connectivity, then those larger RAID arrays will present larger speeds that will already be bottlenecked by the USB 3 drive, whereas the USB 3.1 Gen 2 drive, SSD or hard drive would be able to take advantage of those speeds. Ultimately, of course, the SSD USB 3.1 Gen 2 drive is going to cost you more, somewhere between three to five times the cost in terms of capacity than that of traditional hard drives. But if speed is important and time is money in your home or business endeavors, I'd like to think today's video has proven the versatility and the need for these faster drives for USB backups in NAS. If you found this video helpful, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.